Hey, 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 it's Friday, and I want to speak for a couple of minutes, probably more, about this week's Torah portion, Genesis. It's the first portion of the Torah. I love it. It's probably my favorite. And here we go. Uh, let's kick it off with a couple of verses from the King James Version of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So already we see here that there's this image of primordial chaos, something being formless, void, there's darkness, there's depths, uh, there's the Spirit of God, and there's water. So there's a lot there. People have been pondering these verses over, as well as the rest of the Bible, right, for thousands and thousands of years. But I, what, what I want to hit are two specific words. Uh, I'll get into the original Hebrew in a minute. So a lot of translations, certainly in English, but probably in other languages, um, translated as formless and void in the second verse. The original Hebrew says tohu vavohu, tohu and vohu, two words which when they are paired together in modern day Hebrew, it means chaos. If you say something is tohu vavohu, it means it's in chaos or something is chaos or chaotic. But uh, those are actually two words. It's not one word. It's two separate words, tohu and vohu. Tohu comes from tehiya, which is to wonder, to think about. And vohu comes from behiya, which is to use your eyes in order to stare or observe or look upon. Um, those two words, there's a lot there. Because I feel that combined with that darkness and that uh, on the deep and that divine spirit on the water, uh, is it tells an entire story of mankind before uh, God even spoke, let there be light. Already in these two verses is... A story in itself but it's one that we need to figure out it's not told uh, linearly it's just there's certainly something there, there there's a motion there um, so right the heaven and the earth which is basically here's how it happened but the first time uh, the second time that the earth is mentioned it's formless and void tohu vavohu so what is all that for crying out loud well here's what I think of it I think it speaks to the natural state of man and a way for man to advance spiritually and consequently uh, materialistically, physically, in the world. If we, are, if we take care to observe and to ponder that which we are observing, if we actually take tohu, vavohu, and make them a part of us, if we observe and we think, then we are able to ease that darkness which is on the face of the deep and shed some light by using that divine spirit, by manifesting that divine spirit moving across the water. Water has always been associated with life and with uh, joy, with uh, prosperity. Water has been associated with the Torah itself. Water comes from on high, right, from the heavens down to the earth, uh, getting to the deepest and darkest roots. It goes Water is the element that uh, travels, I think, downward and doesn't stop until it reaches the lowest point possible. Something like that. Much like fire strives to get as high as it possibly can. So the Tohu Vavohu are major players in the advancement of oneself. We need to look. We need to wonder. We need to find our way to negate or otherwise contend with that darkness on the face of the deep and to shed light by manifesting the spirit of God and living and being a living man, being like the water. Water was also many times associated with humility and with other positive traits because there's a lot there and we are made of water and the earth is mostly water and uh, the word water keeps coming back in different ways in the Bible, meaning different things. But there's a lot there. There's a story within the story. And that's partly why I love this Torah portion so much.